This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. Now, in this chapter, we're going to look at something called accounting rate of return and payback period. In the next chapters, a rather more important is something called discounted cash flow, net present value approach. Uh, so that they, what's coming in the later chapters is far more important, but having said that, uh, you've got to be happy with these two very basic ones, accounting rate of return and payback period. Now, what we mean by investment appraisal, we're talking about investing in long-term projects, uh, things like we're, face, we're thinking of buying a new machine. This machine is going to cost us half a million. We've estimated the returns that are likely to come. We think, oh, it's going to last us 10 years. Uh, these are the returns we expect each year. And deciding whether or not the investment is worthwhile. Is it worth spending half a million to get those returns? Uh, or maybe there'd be a choice of machines, investments, in which case, which perhaps would be the better of the two. So that's what we're talking about. Uh, and that's answered exercise one very much. What do we mean by capital investment decision? Well, capital investment, buying non-current assets. Is it worth it or isn't it? Um, it's a choice which is better. Uh, what are the features that increase the risk level? Uh, the big problem is that however we go about making the uh, decision, we're having to forecast into the future what returns will be. And of course, it's impossible to forecast accurately what the returns are going to be in 10 years time. But there's always that risk, however we go about decision making. Anyway, the um, techniques we need to go through in this chapter, I've already said accounting rate of return, ARR, and payback period and then later next chapter we'll go on to discounted cash flow the more important one first of to explain uh, accounting rate of return can you turn straight to i'm not going to I'll explain the formula within the example can you turn straight to the third page exercise two exercise two says a machine will cost eighty thousand it's got an expected life of four years with an anticipated scrap value at the end of four years of 10,000. The profits for each year are expected to be 20,000 in the first year, 30 in the second, 40 in the third, 10 in the fourth. And we're asked to calculate the accounting rate of return. Well, the accounting rate of return um, is a profit measure, it's an accounts measure, that's why it's called the accounting rate of return. And I said I wouldn't write four, really, but I will. It's the average profit per annum expressed as a percentage of the average capital invested. Uh, and so, first of all, what's the average profit going to be here? Well, we told the profits, expected profits for each year, so I add them up and divide by 4, 20, 30, 40, and 10. I shouldn't need to write all that down, but still. Uh, 20, 50, 90, 100, I get an average of 25,000 per annum. No problem. Uh, the average capital invested, so, so that's the average profit, uh, the average capital invested, now here be careful, we want the average balance sheet value, the average value in the standard financial position is an accounts measure, and you see here at the beginning, it will appear in these statements at the original cost of 80,000. Over the four year life, will be depreciating. 
But by the end of the life, it will appear, you know, immediately before sold, will have depreciated down to 10,000. So year by year, um, the carrying value, the book value will be falling. It'll be falling from 80 down to 10. The average value will be 80, the cost, plus the scrap 10, divided by 2, which is 45,000. Now, I don't want to create a problem if it's not there, but a lot of people want to take 80 minus 10 over 2. Now, be clear why it's 80 plus 10 over 2. You see, if the scrap value was 0, it would start at 80. Over the four years, it would drop to 0, and the average would have been 40. Here, it starts in the statements of the original 80, the cost, it falls, but it only falls down to a closing value of 10. Surely the average is somewhat higher, it's 45. Uh, and so, the accounting rate of return, average annual profit, 25,000 a year, over the average capital invested, 45. 25 divided by 45 as a percent, I get 55.5%. Now, so I will use that. The, the company would have some sort of target. It might be their overall return on capital. This is a bit like return on capital, which I mentioned earlier. So they have some overall target, and either it's more than target, we'll accept the machine, or it's less than target, in which case we wouldn't. Uh, strengths and weaknesses, it's easy to calculate, um, although I'm not sure when you're spending how much is 80,000. I think I'd be prepared to take a bit longer doing other ways, if other ways were better. But um, anyway, still, easy to calculate. Uh, the results, uh, percentages, so but certainly can use it for comparing. Um, it does account for the total profitability over its life, yes. Uh, somewhat more important is that it is a profit measure. And despite something I'm going to say in a moment, shareholders, the first thing they tend to look at when they get the accounts is the profitability. Shareholders are concerned about profits. And if shareholders are going to care about profits, then so should we. Now, the weakness is that it doesn't account for the time value of money. Um, we'll say a lot about that in the next chapter, that really better will be to look at the cash flows, the cash generated rather than the profits, but I, I, we'll discuss that in the next chapter. Uh, and of course, because we're looking at profits, they tend to be subjective, it's affected by the accounting treatment, uh, a problem. Anyway, that's accounting rate of return. Uh, it's very common in real life. Otherwise, I've said enough. Uh, the second of the basic measures is something called payback period. And the payback period, uh, we calculate, it's the number of years it takes In, I don't know why I'm writing this, it's written down there, but still, it's the number of years it takes in cash terms to recoup or to get back the original investment. Now, I'll talk about the relevance of it and strengths and weaknesses again in a minute, but look at the exercise here. A machine will cost 1.2 million. It says over its lifespan, um, that's not worded very well. It means we'll have to pay 1.2 million now for the machine. It will last four years. Its estimated scrap value is zero. And it's expected to generate cash savings as listed below. So it's going to effectively, it's going to earn us cash. And so now it, this table has been set out rather badly. 
As of now, year zero, if you like, we're going to pay out 1.2 million, our working thousands will pay out 1,200. But then each year we'll get back, we'll get 300 next year, 500 the year after, 800, 850. So how about making it clear, because the table isn't set out very well, we'll spend 1,200, we'll make cash savings each year from then on. What we need to calculate is how long will it take us in cash terms to get back that original 1,200. Well, after one year, we get back 300, so the total we've had back is 300. I need to get back 1,200. So carry on a second year. Uh, second gives us 500. So the total we've had now, we've had back 800. So it's taking longer than two years. Uh, third year gives us 800. And so in total, we've now had back 1,600. Well, it does carry on saving us money. It saves us another 850 in the following year. But we want to know how many years does it take to get back that original 1,200? Well, we got 800 back after two years. Uh, 600 in total back after three. So it's somewhere between two and three years. Well, we apportion between them. Uh, we assume that the 800 in the third year Assume that we get in the cash evenly throughout the year. And so, after two years, we've had back 800. We need another 400. Well, we've got 1,200 in total, so we need an extra 400. Well, since the third year gives us 800 in total, to get 400, we assume is four-eighths of a year. It's 2.5 years. So I hope that makes sense. Again, it's easy arithmetic. But again, how many years is it taking us to get back the original 1,200 or 1.2 million? It's taking us two and a half years. Now, as to how we use it, the relevance of it, uh, first of all, and this is actually quite a popular measure in real life. Now, first of all, the sooner it pays itself back, the better. And what makes it an important measure is that I said at the very beginning, however we choose to make uh, these decisions, whether it's accounting rate of return or whatever it is, we're having to base our decision on estimates on forecasts into the future. And so if you've got a project, I mean, here it lasted four years, you may be fairly confident about your estimate in the first year. It's only an estimate, a forecast, you may be reasonably confident, it's only a year away. But the further into the future, it really becomes more and more just guesswork. You know, if you had a project that was going to last 10 years, well, good heavens, how can you possibly estimate uh, the saving in 10 years' time with any degree of certainty. And so, with payback period, you see, if you've got a payback period of 10 years, I'd be very frightened of going ahead. Because they're all estimates. There's a risk I might, it might never pay for itself. Whereas if it's got a payback period of a year, well, then we're pretty confident we will get our money back, uh, at the very least. And so, in general terms, the shorter the payback period, the better. You know, once it has paid for itself, in a sense, anything extra is a bonus. So the shorter, the better. And the way companies use it, they tend to have targets. We will only invest in projects um, that have a payback period of less than four years, for example. So either it is less than four years or it isn't. The strengths and weaknesses of this, again, quick to calculate. I personally think that's rather silly. <laughs> anyway. uh, it makes sense to non-finance finance managers, all right. It uses cash flows 
Again, profits are very subjective and depends on accounting policies. Here, do note the question, these were cash flows, cash savings or cash received, whichever. And so <clears throat> it's pure cash, you know, we're paying out 1,200 cash, how long to get that back? Now, it does reduce project risk. That's effectively saying what I said a minute ago, that the shorter the period, it's not the payback reduces risk, but the shorter the period, the less risky that there is that it might never pay for itself. Uh, the weaknesses, it doesn't account for the time value of money. Um, these savings, you know, there's a <clears throat> saving money next year is more beneficial than having to wait two years. Well, we'll deal, explain all of that in the next chapter when we look at the time value of money discounted cash flow. Uh, it ignores the total returns. So this one pays for itself in two and a half years. That's the critical thing. Well, of course, the fourth year, this one gave us 850. Maybe there was another project which gave us 8,000. Well, on pure payback period, you'd be indifferent because you, you're only you're ignoring anything that happens after the two and a half years. Uh, how uh, target is arbitrary? There's no rule. I said maybe we set a target. They must pay for itself within four years. Well, where's the four years come from? You know, there's no rules. Ah, <coughs> uh, 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 because of that. Despite all the good reasons I've said for looking at the payback period, um, it can result, it's quite likely to result, in, in always choosing short-term projects rather than long-term projects. There is that danger. And that's why um, no business really should use one measure on its own. They'll look at a range of measures. Maybe they will look at a, a accounting rate of return. Maybe they will look at payback period. Hopefully, they'll certainly look at discounted cash flow in the next chapter. But then they'd form an overall judgment rather than rely on just one measure. So that was a nice, easy chapter. Wait till the next one.